Hi there, this is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films and welcome to a random review. Today's random review is from 1970 and it's Borsalino starring icons Alain Delon and Joe Paul Belmondo. And this is a relatively new release by Arrow US, so it's a Region A, it didn't get a Region B Arrow um, release. This is a film by Jacques Deray, who did La Piscine um, with Alain Delon, and I did a double take onto Deray Delon collaborations, The Gang and Three Men to Kill. Um, I'm not sure how many films Alain Delon made with Deray, um, but certainly that's four that I know of. Um, so this is a a lovely release with a slip cover, reversible art. Um, a booklet and you even get a disc which is quite nice and um, it has a poster and also art cards of the two icons who hadn't worked together before this I believe and Delon um, his production company was involved wanted to work with Belmondo and yeah, this is 1970, so allegedly um, Butch Casting the Sundance Kid with Newman and Redford kind of inspired Delon to make it not necessarily a similar film, but certainly to get Belmondo together. So this is two years before The Godfather um, and three years before The Sting, which I guess is a kind of similar film. So this is a gangster film set in um, the 30s in Marseille and very much like The Sting it has a kind of jazzy upbeat score um, by French jazz pianist Claude Bowling um, and the costumes by Jacques Fonterey who did Barbarella um, and you can tell on the slipcover that both Delon and Belmondo have kind of different styles. Delon very much in the Jean-Pierre Melville style, whereas Delon, uh, Belmondo, sorry, um, his character is um, far more flamboyant and kind of lives moment to moment, whereas Delon is that classic Melville character of very measured um, and very cerebral, um, very internal character, whereas Belmondo is a lot more flamboyant. Um, I mean, I'm not a huge Belmondo fan, um, but obviously the, the pair of them are icons and there's lots of shots in the film um, that are fairly iconic just with the two um, guys in it. They have a couple of wonderful entrances together. But the film starts with Alain Delon um, getting let out of prison and looking fairly shabby. And he looks for what we assume is his ex-girlfriend and he learns that she's went and shacked up with this other character um, in Marseille who turns out to be Belmondo. So they're first seen together and they have a massive fight. Um, very much like the scene in For A Few Dollars More where Clint Eastwood and Lee Van Cleef um, get the hotel owner um, Clint Eastwood wants Lee Van Cleef's luggage out and Lee Van Cleef keeps telling him to put it back in. It's the same with Belmondo and Delon um, with this female character who Delon asked to get your hat and coat because you're coming with me and then Belmondo's like put your hat and coat back on because you're staying here um, and that ends up being a wonderful fist fight between the two which is played to no music um, and it is very amusing. I mean, again, the tone of the film is fairly light. 
even though it's a gangster film and it does get kind of darker and more violent as the film as the film progresses um, but again you still get that jazzy sting like almost Bugsy Malone type score um, it's not a musical though but what we have with the costumes the production design um, it's absolutely gorgeous I mean this was a film when I realised Arrow had released it even all being in Region A, I kind of had to get it. I mean, Delon and Belmondo and... I mean, DeRay, the films that I've seen of his are um, very good and this is no exception. This is a wonderful film. Um, it's just a shade over two hours. Um, yeah, it could have been slightly shorter, but again, you're in the company of these two icons and even though they are criminals obviously they're super cool and they're suave I mean granted the women in the film aren't treated the best generally they're not treated that well in gangster films in general um, but again this is about the two of them as they um, climb the ladder in the local Marseille um, crime ladder yeah, they climb the ladder of crime um, by using the crime ladder and there's various um, plots and people are killed and then they're framed and they need to find out who put them in the frame uh, Michelle Bouquet who I recognise if you've seen a ton of Claude Chabrol films um, he appears um, as one of the characters trying to advise them what to do and he's um, a rung on the ladder as well so it's not particularly a film plot wise that we haven't seen before you know a pair of um, low level gangsters come together um, and unite in a common goal of trying to become top dog, um, head honcho, the big enchilada, um, numero uno, which they managed to do, but obviously there's always the the way back down as well, because as soon as you become the big enchilada, um, somebody wants, you, wants to knock you off um, that peak. Um, so perhaps, again, it's not an original story, it's been done before, but again, just the the period, um, the sense of building a world um, in that period, the costumes, and again, as I said, the production design is wonderful, um, and it looks beautiful as well, it's a lovely colour film from 1970, and again, two different characters, two different actors and they both have their own kind of style um, and it works well um, for the actual characters as I said one of them is more flamboyant and lives minute by minute especially in his attitude to women I mean there's a scene where Belmondo is going to a flower kiosk to buy um, some roses for a woman and then comes across another woman and then his attention is immediately um, drawn towards her who of course turns out to be um, one of the gangsters above them um, his latest paramour so you can guess where that goes um, I guess it kind of has the same sort of look and feel um, as Once Upon a Time in America perhaps without the scope it's a much lower budgeted film um, and perhaps without that sense of melancholy, that sense of dread and tragedy um, as I said, the music and the sparks that fly between the two leads it does have a much more jaunty atmosphere um, it's not quite as sugary and kind of fake as Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid um, again, it does get gritty near the end of the film but it's still not a um, 
it's not a Melville gangster film, put it that way. Um, there's a bit more wind in its sails, and it is a bit more flaunty and um, not necessarily upbeat, but certainly a bit more flaunty and airy, um, despite it getting somewhat bloody near the end of the film. So if you're fans of Delon and Belmondo, and if you're fans of both, then it's a kind of must-buy. Um, again, I don't know whether this has a region B. It probably does have a French or um, German release. I'm not. I'm not um, sure. I'm guessing because it was only a region A release. There must be somebody who has it in region B in Europe. Um, so you have a commentary by um, film scholar Josh Nelson. You have the music of Borsellino, a new interview with composer and film historian Neil Brand on Claude Balling's score. Dressing Down, a new interview with film scholar Elizabeth Castellano London, or London on Jack Fontaine's caution designs for Borsellino. And Le Magnifique Belmondo, um, an archive extra celebrating unique talent and career of the French actor. There's a trailer. Again, the booklet contains um, writing by Jeanette Von Sondeau, who I'm a big fan of, um, who does lots of work in the Studio Canal, World Cinema, and has also got a wonderful commentary on um, Melville's Army of Shadows and the Criterion um, Region A Blu-ray. Um, and there's an archival essay by curator Elisa Fulco on the iconic Borsellino hats worn in the film. Yeah, I should say that's why it's called Borsellino for Delon's fedora, um, not Belmondo's flat cap. Um, and again, there's art cards as well. Um, so it's a lovely release. And again, a film, when I realised it was getting an Arrow release, I kind of had to pick it up, even though it's a Region A. But it's so enjoyable. Um, and again, we just don't have people like Alain Delon and Jean-Pierre Belmondo anymore. Um, I know you could say Brad Pitt and George Clooney or something, but Brad Pitt and George Clooney are not Alain Delon and John Paul Belmondo. Um, at least for me anyway. But as we know, my opinion is not fact. So please let me know if you've seen Borsellino and what you think of it. And hopefully you'll join me again for more random reviews. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films. Sing very well.